So this exercise related to alternative to practical and specifically about the time period. The key points which you should remember about the pendulum, that the precautions which you should take for when you are doing this experiment and conditions which you can keep constant for a fair comparison. This is about the graph, how to find the gradient. Now, the first question is a planning experiment. First and the second question of this assignment exercise is planning experiment that is a paper six last question of paper six like you have to plan the experiment so whenever you are planning the experiment you should always write the experiment according to the parts which they ask don't write in a paragraph don't write essays try to write the precise experiment like the experiment which just give the details but don't write essays so the first a student is investigating a time taken for a metal ball to stop moving after being released on a curved track. Figure 4.1 shows the shape of the track and the track is flexible so the shape of the curve can be changed. Like we can change the shape of this curve. The following apparatus is available for us. What is available for us? We have A selection of a metal balls of different masses, like we can use different balls here. We have a flexible, the track is flexible, so we can change its curve. A clamp to hold the track. A stopwatch is there, a tape measure to measure the height or the distance, and a meter rule or a meter scale is also there. The student can also use other operators and the material that are usually available in the school lab. We have to plan an experiment to investigate. So now this is an important part and you should understand how to write experiment in, especially in paper six. So try to answer the question rather than writing a paragraph. So plan an experiment to investigate a factor that affects the time taken for a metal ball to stop moving after being released on the curve track. So we want to estimate, we want to investigate on what factor this time, like, because what will happen when we release this ball, this ball will vibrate to and fro and eventually it will stop at the mean position. So we are investigating how, on what factor this time depends. Like it depends on the mass, it depends on the height from which the ball is released. Many factors are there which can affect this time period, or not a time period which can affect this time taken by the ball to stop moving completely, like to stop. Sid, uh, how would you expect the ball to move? Like if I release this ball from here, how do you expect how it will move? What will the motion or the movement of the ball? If I release from certain height. So what do you... So what we call, like, look up and down motion is like this, like we are not releasing we are not releasing from certain height. If I drop from certain height above the bench, then it will hit, then it will rise up, then it will bounce. So up and down is this motion. But when it is going to other side and coming back, so it means it is back and forth, like vibration. So what the first part they ask, state how would you expect the ball to move? So what do we expect how this ball will move so this ball will move back and forth, eventually it will, or forward and backward, back and forth or oscillate. And eventually it will stop at a certain, uh, at the center, back and forth like a pendulum it will move, or it will vibrate like a pendulum and eventually it will stop at the center. That's the first thing. So, and where to write the answer? You don't have to write the answer in front of it. In exam, as you can see, the space will be available. Here, the space will be available. The full page is there. It's of seven marks. So, I'm writing it in front of it just to give you an idea that how, what should be the answer for each point. But when you are writing an exam, 
you will on the separate page will uh, space will be available so you will write on the space uh, given provided space so it will move back and forth that's the first thing the second part explain how would you carry out investigation how we will do this experiment so basically what we will do we will release this ball from a certain height or a determined position and we record the time and we start the timer and record the time until the ball is completely stopped because we are investigating uh, what factors can affect the ball to stop completely so how we carry out the experiment so we will release this ball from certain position or a specific position and record the time for the ball to stop completely. This is the answer for the second part. So again, you will not write in front of it. There will be space available the next page. There you will write the answer. Is it clear the second part? So this was the answer for the first part. This is the answer for the second. So release the ball from certain height and we record the time for the ball to stop completely. Now the third point, state which variable you would keep constant and which variable, which variables, variables, plural. So which variable you would keep constant and which variable you will change. So here, like two of them should be constant and one we will change. So example, if I'm investigating, so I can mention the variable which I'm keeping it constant. First, the position which the ball is released. Like every time I'm releasing the ball from the same position and the same height. Like I'm releasing a ball from this position, every ball, and I'm releasing from the same height. These are the two variables I'll keep constant. And what variable I will change? I, because I, I can change, I can change the mass of the ball, like I will repeat the experiment with different masses. First, I use two grams, then three grams, then four grams, and so on. So what variables we kept same or a constant and what variables we are changing? So the first one, the variable which we keep constant, we can mention the position from which the ball is released and the height from which the ball is released. And the variable which we change, that is the mass of the ball. Like we will change the mass of the balls and we are investigating like how much time it will take for different masses to stop completely. Why I write two variables? Because here it's a plural variables which we keep constant and only one that is changing. Or you can also do, it's not like fixed because we have position, height and mass. So if I write here, like example, you can change, you can write a mass here. If you write the mass, it should be constant, then you will write position should be, uh, or the height from which it is dropped should be changed. So any variable you can mention according to the experiment. So specifically, the mass we will change and position and the height will keep constant. Then draw a table or the tables with a column heading, how you display your result. So how we display our result, as we are changing the mass and recording a time it will take to stop. So the, the table, our table should have two quantities. The one is the mass. The one is a mass, which should normally in gram, because as, even though SI unit of the mass is kilogram, but in the lab, we are not using objects in kilograms like these small spheres are in grams. So mass will be in gram and time it will take to stop that will be in second. But you don't have to fill up the numbers here because you're not doing experiment. You're just explaining the idea that how this experiment can be done. So you don't have to write any numbers in the table. You just have to mention the quantity which you measure and the unit of the quantity. 
That means the co column heading means the units. Like the quantity and the unit which you are taking. That's a column heading. So quantity is the mass, small m, and the unit in gram. Then the other quantity, we are measuring the time it will take to stop, and the unit is seconds. Then explain how would you use your readings to reach a conclusion. So how, how we reach a conclusion, how we re use our readings. So whenever we want to re like use our reading, we will always plot a graph and which graph we will plot? We will plot a graph between mass and time. And we will compare the, or find the trend. Like maybe when we are increasing the mass, the time is also increasing. Maybe when we are increasing the mass, the time might decrease. Or maybe when we are increasing the mass, time may not change. How we can identify? We can identify by just plotting a graph between the two quantities which we are measuring. The mass is one of the quantity and time is another. Is it uh, clear? That how we can plan this experiment to have an idea what factors can affect this ball to be completely stationary. So whenever you're writing the experiment, try to write the points related to the experiment. In question two, which is also a planning experiment, a student is investigating whether the diameter of a pendulum box affects the period of pendulum. Like if we change the size of a pendulum box, will it affect the time period we are investigating? They're not asking, will, they, will it affect or no? They're asking, we want to plan the experiment. So, Again, because all the part, the pendulum bobs are available, one, two, three, four, five centimeter diameters. We have a scissor and a clamp. We have to plan an investigation whether the diameter of a pendulum bob affects the time period. You should list any, any additional apparatus. So what apparatus I need? These are the apparatus available. I want to find the time. I want to find whether a size of a pendulum can affect the time period. So which apparatus is missing from the list? Very important apparatus is missing from the list. I am investigating the size of a pendulum can have effect on the time period. So which apparatus is missing? So the stopwatch is missing. So the stopwatch and even there is no meter rule or a meter scale because if a si we are changing a size of the bob or the pendulum bob, so we should keep the length same. So stopwatch and meter rule are the missing apparatus. But because additional apparatus they ask, so you can even mention stopwatch is on. Only if you write stopwatch, that is also correct. Explain briefly how would you carry out the investigation. So how we'll do this experiment, how we carry out this experiment. So first, what we will do, we will measure or mark the mean and extreme positions. If you only write stopwatch, that is also correct. You will get the mark. So first we will mark the mean position, mean and extreme position and reset the stopwatch. Then we will record time for 20 oscillation. And then find the time period, how to get the time period, divide the time recorded by number of oscillation. That is the total time divided by number of oscillation. And then we will repeat the experiment with different size of bob. Like because we are investigating how the size of the bob can affect the time period. 
That's the second point. State key variable that you, you would control, like the things which we'll control or things will keep constant. So what things, are, because I, I, can, I have to change only diameter. So what other things I should keep constant or same? Yeah, what are the things I should keep same? Diameter must be changed, so other factor must be constant. That's good. The length of the pendulum, that's right. We should have the same length of a pendulum. Amplitude, like the distance from mean to extreme position. The number of the oscillation for each size, that should be same. Like if we did the first one for 20 by oscillation, the second one should also be 20. Point of release, that's good point. Like the point of release is also, it should also be same for all of them. Then table with a column heading to show how we display our result. So how we display our result. So what we are doing, we are investigating how the size effects or a diameter effects at time period. So what will be the table? First, we'll have a diameter, which will be in centimeter. Then we'll have a time for 20 vibration or 10 vibration, and then we'll have a time period. So we should have three columns here. One is the diameter, the size. The other one is the time for 20 or 10 or 15 oscillation. And the next one is capital T is the total time for one oscillation or an average time period. Again, you don't have to write numbers here in exam. You just have to fill up this table uh, with a column heading. No need for writing numbers. Then the last point, how would you use your reading? To reach a conclusion. So we are finding how the diameter can affect the time period. So which quantities I should plot a graph between the quantities. So we will plot a graph between diameter and the time period. And we will compare the or check the trend or find the Trend. Like if one is increasing, other is also increasing or decreasing or directly proportional or inversely proportional. So we plot a graph. And even if you do in exam, for example, if you don't write this statement, you can also draw or you can just mention that you will have a diameter example on Y axis and time capital time, which is a time period on Y like a diameter on X axis and time period on Y axis. But you don't have to plot any graph here. You just have to mention that you plotted this graph, like mark, label the axis, and plot a graph between diameter and time period. So if you don't mention the statement and just write time period on y-axis, diameter on x-axis, you will also score the marks. But uh, better mention this statement as well, like plot a graph between the two quantities which you are uh, measuring. So in this case, we are measuring a diameter and time period. That's why the graph should be between the diameter and time period. Is it uh, clear, this part? First two questions, which were about planning experiment.